Welcome back to Marvelous Dads. I'm Dave Mendonca. Today I'm talking about episode five of She-Hulk. So this episode, a lot of it is about Jen Walters trying to get back the name She-Hulk from Titania, who in episode four was suing Jen Walters uh, because she trademarked She-Hulk the name, right? So we have that going on. And obviously Jen Walters wants the name, wants the name back and all that jazz. Now, in my previous video in episode four, about episode four, I was speculating that Matt Murdock could represent Jen Walters in this court case, but no, wrong. It's actually her colleague, Mallory Book, I believe. So she's the one that has to take on the case. It's interesting. Um, when I'm watching She-Hulk in this episode, the CGI just doesn't look right. It looks like She-Hulk has these googly eyes kind of thing. Man, it's the CGI for She-Hulk is tough to nail down. Like Smart Hulk, the VFX guys, great job. You know, just the, the realism. He's a totally fictional character, but just the textures of the skin and all that sort of sort of stuff they have nailed down. But looking at She-Hulk, there's still like a cartoonish kind of element to her. Anyway, that's just an aside. So She-Hulk still in a battle. Mallory book is trying to get her off the hook. And then it's funny, in this episode, you see a lot of Titania, her just, her overuse of the She-Hulk name in the, the marketing of her sham product, her brand uh, sham product line called She-Hulk. And you see all these ads everywhere. And even Jen Walter's boss complains about seeing it on a, like a billboard or something like that. And she or he applies the heat on Jen Walters to get this thing done, to, to get this case over with and win it because it just looks bad on the company, right? On She-Hulk's company, her um, law firm. Anyway, it's just funny, it just Titania's everywhere. So there's some neat little quips happening, at least in one court scene where She-Hulk enters the room and or enters the courtroom and Titania goes, you know, what's up, Shrek? So it's official. Shrek is in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So that's pretty neat. And yeah, so Titania was making fun of her and that kind of thing. Later on in the episode, you have Jen Walters on the brink of losing the case, right? But then she had to prove like the use of the name She-Hulk before Titania trademarked it, right? So she remembered... Her dating profile was in the name of She-Hulk and all those questionable guys that she dated was proof that she had that name before Titania did. So it, it was funny just seeing all those uh, exes, all those guys that she dated who were really mediocre come up on the stand and really validated for Jen Walters that she is She-Hulk, even though it was very embarrassing for Jen Walters to really showcase to the world her interesting taste in men. So I thought that was interesting. She did end up win the case and there you go. So she got She-Hulk and that sort of thing. She got the name back. So this episode also had some funny turns to it. Uh, it was interesting. Uh, you know, She-Hulk's, I guess, a business attire isn't the greatest. And there was one funny line, I think it was by Mallory Book, the character Mallory Book saying that She-Hulk dresses like a football player who's in court trying to dispute a DUI, which is pretty brand, uh, bang on, just that gray carbo, you know, cardboard cutout kind of suit. So I thought that was a clever line. And other funny parts to this episode. So the funny wasn't bad. Like this episode wasn't episode four funny. Episode four, like this episode has no Madison, has no Wong, has no Blonsky, has no Smart Hulk. So a lot of the, you know, like the cameo appearances of people that really stole the show in previous episodes, you did not have that here in regards to MCU characters stealing the, uh, stealing the episode. But there were some funny scenes, like when um, She-Hulk's assistant Nikki and, uh, yeah, Jen Walters' colleague Pug, I think they called him. I think they call them. They decide to go to Pug's drip broker, like a fashion guy who has all like the underground insight on where to get the greatest stuff like fashion wise. And he was telling Nikki about his Iron Man threes, obviously a play on all these different types of basketball shoes, like, you know, the Jordan ones and all these sorts of things. So that was funny. The Iron Man threes. Anyway, 
Yeah, he wanted Nikki to tag along with him, at, I believe, to get in line for one of these things for, for some Iron Man 3s and stuff like that. And then Nikki convinced him uh, to go to the drip broker, Pugs, you know, fashion guy kind of thing. Anyway, so they go there. The uh, It's a bobo shop. Like, it's like a bubble tea kind of place that acts as a front for this underground fashion thing. And there was a, a funny part when they're trying to convince you know, the guy behind the cashier's desk at the Boba shop that, hey, you know, we're here to see Alonzo. That was Pug's guy, you know, insider contact. And once they convince the cashier that, you know, they, they know what's happening, he guides them to like this bootleg Avengers clothing shop that the clothes, like it's all these like, you know, Captain America shields, Thor hammers. And shirts that don't say Avengers, but they say <laughs> Avengers and Avengers. It's that was funny. Totally uh, bootlegged, ripped off stuff. I thought that was funny. And they had to buy the clothes in order to see uh, the person that designs actually like clothing for superheroes. That is the main dude that they need to get to to get clothes for She Hulk because she doesn't have any, right? So they they see the guy. And I think his name is Luke. He's very much an artiste, high standards, and he knows how to create clothing for superheroes. He's got a very exclusive clientele. And Nikki got in She-Hulk to see this guy or to get clothes for her because she she told him that, you know, she's an Avenger, that She-Hulk's an Avenger, which she's not at this point. And that she's going to be a megastar kind of thing. So just the talk of Avengers, obviously, that, that's where She-Hulk is going. This is definitely planting the seeds of that. And so, so that was cool, just seeing that interplay. And then She-Hulk comes, uh, comes over and meets Luke. I think that's the guy's name. So that's cool. And that he's got to get extra like stretchy wool because he has to design like a specific outfit that fits Jen Walters smaller frame and she hulk six foot seven frame. So he loved the challenge, that kind of thing. So that was neat. Obviously the end of the episode, that's the big key where Luke's assistant leaves a box just out in the open. And Luke is like, wait a second. Hey, Tinsley, don't you believe in, you know, client, you know, confidentiality kind of thing. And it turns out, we end the show on Daredevil's helmet, yellow helmet. Okay, obviously that is leading to Dare, Daredevil being introduced in the series, which has been rumored. So I'm curious, like Daredevil, I thought he was like a New York centric character. So why is he on the West Coast? Is this teasing the West Coast Avengers? I don't know. I don't know if that's a part of it. You know, She-Hulk, Daredevil, that kind of thing. And the yellow, the yellow helmet, the yellow helmet obviously is not the red iconic helmet that we all know and love. So, so that's the big reveal. The big reveal in this episode is Daredevil. And otherwise, this episode's pretty lean. Uh, it's yeah, I don't know. Like episode four was like this and episode five's like, yeah, it's just the comedy. There were some quips there, but again, it's she Hulk, Jen Walters, the character. It's not, it's just, I don't know. It just seems like everybody else is having fun, doing great, doing great things. But uh, Jen Walters herself, it's just so plain. And I don't blame the actress. I believe her name is Tatiana Maslany. Maslany. Uh, you know, she's a great actress. It's just the character herself when she's Jen Walters is just very bland. And I get it. That's, you know, they're showing her struggles in the dating world and her trying to get her identity away from She-Hulk and stuff like that. And she's not, you know, over an overly exciting character. But it just, I don't know. I, I, just, I just wish, again, that her character would stand out a bit more that would take more of the forefront, take more of a leadership role. But maybe she's just, maybe it's because she's just growing into that because she's still reluctant about that She-Hulk identity. So anyway, She-Hulk, you know, Jen Walters character really still for me is vanilla and the CGI is still questionable in my eyes, which is too bad, but definitely Daredevil looking forward to seeing how he's introduced and so this Luke guy, if he's designing outfits for Daredevil, who else? 
like who who else is his client? Who are who are the other clients, superhero clients? I wonder if they're going to reveal that down the line. And would love to find out Luke's background. Where'd he come from? How did how did he evolve to his current situation? Uh, another question I found: This guy Todd, one of the the guys that went on a date with She Hulk, the the Todd guy who's totally foaming over the mouth uh, from the mouth talking about she hulk superpowers she was at he was actually in this episode with uh the lawyer book uh, mallory book it was actually he was actually her client or is her client just who is this guy there's something more to him i, I don't know who he is obviously he's, he's a bigger character than what we know something to keep an eye on is that todd guy all right so there was no mid credit or end credit scene to this episode. However, the artwork, once the episode finished after you saw the Daredevil helmet, once it finished, you saw all these images, right? There's this one image of, of Pug and I believe Nikki at the shoe store. And it's all these different shoes in the background, like uh, the Iron Man 3s, I think he was holding. But if you take a closer look, those other shoes... There's like Cyclops, there's Deadpool, there's all these other characters, X-Men characters that are in there. If you take a closer look, it's it's plain as day, so definitely some more breadcrumbs, some more teasing about X-Men and other future characters and future phases of the MCU. So I thought that was cool. There's a nice little replacement for a mid-credit or end-credit scene. All right, so that's my take on episode five. Uh, we took a little dip with episode five after an amazing episode four. So hopefully episode six gets us back up again. And yeah, I, I just, I, I, it's just too bad. It's too bad the series is just one of these up and down. So hopefully they pick it up again in episode six. All right, uh, feel free to share this video, subscribe to the channel. Great to see you as always. Until next time, take care. <laughs>